All right, I've just put three layers on this thing, and I've decided that uh, due to one of the other potential conundrums of using the beach ball method, and that is probably the only edge the stuffed trash bag has above it, is that the stuffed trash bag likes to settle down. The beach ball, being so round, becomes very top-heavy at this stage of the project. So what I'm going to do after these three layers here is I'm going to allow these to dry before I flip it and get to work on the opposite side. I like to have a total of six layers altogether, but it is not a super, super requirement. You could theoretically throw paper clay on after about three, four layers and be in good shape. But because this is starting to get a little bit wobbly-bobbly and I have no, I, no desire to go catching this thing as it rolls off the uh, craft table onto the floor, I'm going to pause, let it dry, and then I'm going to work on the other side to distribute the weight a little bit more evenly. But you will find that this gets a little bit about this far into the project. Back to doing the opposite side now. And the bottom has dried overnight, so we're going to start on the top. What we're doing is laying strips from this middle zone up. So when you are painting your sauce on, Maybe starting from the middle zone, moistening up, and get your strips. Make sure they overlap, otherwise this median zone here won't be reinforced. And I apologize for any fan sounds on me, but it's stupid humid out today, and there's no way I'm working with that one. Okay, it's about time to do your top suction. Depending on how big your beach ball is, you're either much closer to the air nozzle or much further away than I am. One way or another, we do not want to cover this area though. So we're gonna lay our strips in just sort of a lined hex around it to leave it open. And we're just gonna be following this sort of a pattern where we slap strips all around it, but we never cover this nozzle, because that's where later on we're going to be extracting the beach ball from. So there is your Death Star beach ball, and from here on you can just continue to layer just like you did the bottom. Stack up the layers, go horizontal from time to time, and build it on up. You may notice, as things tend to dry, that your beach ball starts to bulge out of the bottom of the casement. That is perfectly normal and will happen as the outer layers shrink and put some pressure on there. It's one of the things that helps keep the form bulbous. I need to throw on some more layers before I can clay, so I'm going to get to work on that. We're back down to finish up the paper strips. The bottom layer is pretty good. I'm just gonna switch back to the top and throw a few more bits on, just because when I was checking the thickness, just by kind of flicking and feeling for both sound and how, how much give there was to the project. Like right here, if you can press in like that with relative ease and see a divot, you might wanna go a little bit further. Whereas if you really can't, cause a divot in your beach ball, then that's a good sign that that layering is pretty good. 
but I'm gonna press on now, add a few more layers, and hopefully work on to some clay, get a face on this guy, and start having the fun part. So I got a little carried away. I was all set with the layers and I immediately started scribbling a face because it's so much fun. And then I realized that I hadn't really turned the camera on. So it, it's okay, it didn't get that far. Right, yeah, face. So once you have your layers all set, then you're gonna just scribble your face on. I like to go with a pencil first. And then once I've got my design in good shape, fill it out with a sharpie so back to it with it all filmed with your happy wonderful wonderful face on there it is time to begin the more fun stage of this which involves getting your paper clay pasted onto our pumpkin. And I am going to whip up a batch of paper clay, which I assume I will be talking about at some point here, about how I used to do it and how I do it now. But otherwise, I'm going to whip up a batch and get started on this boy. Let's talk paper clay. The recipe for paper clay is pretty much the exact same as in my first pumpkin video. The only thing that I do now is the paper mache paste that goes into making the clay I make exceptionally thick. So when I'm making paper mache paste that's going to become paper clay, I put my flour, my water, my glue, but I really put in only so much water that the stuff flows like really thick pancake batter. Have it really, really thick. This way, when you are painting down your paper clay to smooth it, there seems to be more flour to make its way to the cracks, and the end product that you get after brush smoothing is some absolutely gorgeously smooth surface. Your results will vary depending on the cellulose fiber that you've got, and if you want absolutely smooth beyond belief paper clay, then use uh, the recipe from Ultimate Paper Mache on YouTube. Joni's recipe will get you sculpty smooth stuff, but if you like the bulk capacity like I do with the cellulose fiber, then make that mache paste that goes into it stupidly thick. I think I've hit a good cutoff point on this, so we'll get to paper clay next time in the next episode. See you there.